Hey, welcome to Class Act Media. I'm Jack, and let's face it, the day of the reality show is long behind us. In its heyday, the reality show was the most popular genre on television. And when a genre is that popular, you're going to have a lot of good concepts and a lot of bad concepts. Today, we're talking about a bad concept. Yes, we're talking about Kid Nation. Airing for only one season on CBS in 2007, Kid Nation is presumably the spawn of a TV executive reading Lord of the Flies and saying, Greenlight this immediately. The basic premise of Kid Nation is that 40 kids from across the United States are dropped into an abandoned pioneer town called Bonanza City. Yeah, who thought up that name? And that's pretty much it. No adults, no structure, just 40 kids plunked into the middle of nowhere and told to make a civilization. Okay, there is some structure. The kids are split up into four teams called districts, each with their own leader assigned by the show. There's the red district led by Mike, aka that kid on the playground who is cool and all, but you could tell he had some control issues and like you don't know how he's gonna turn out when he grows up because he could really go either way. We all know that guy. The green district led by Laurel who had the thickest Boston accent I've ever heard. I went with the green because I am 100% Irish. The blue district led by Anjay who's... Listen, Anjay's doing his best. And the yellow district, led by Taylor, the bratty Florida princess with a tendency to tell people to Deal with it! I'm not here to make fun of children, I'm here to make fun of the adults who thought this was a good idea. And it was those adults who decided to make Taylor kind of the villain of the show. Need I remind you, she is a 10 year old girl. I mean, yeah, she's being a brat, but they established early on that she's homesick, she's probably just acting out, but now you're putting her on blast in front of the entire world. Other than these districts, it's really up to the kids to make Bonanza City their own. This is about as unsafe and chaotic as it sounds. Do you have siblings? How many do you have? One, two, three, maybe more if you're a Mormon, I guess? I want you to remember how much you and your siblings argued growing up. Now imagine that multiplied by 40. Now imagine that without any parents there to intervene. In fact, the only adults that are there are probably encouraging you to keep arguing. The entire concept behind Kid Nation reminds me of the Boy Fights videos from Arrested Development, except in that it was a joke. It's, it's not a joke here. For example, in one episode this girl named Devon starts a little store. It's cute, you know, it's like a kid making a lemonade stand. But then this kid Jared just fucking demolishes it out of rage and it just comes out of nowhere. Speaking of Jared, he might just be my favorite kid in Bonanza City. He's a true Shakespearean poet. What's to say? A very little little must be due and all is done. Also, this kid's got a better dress sense than me. After he destroys Devon's store in that one episode, he apologizes and then starts a store of his own. And he ends up becoming the most successful kid in town, so he goes on a shopping spree <laughs> <laughs> Call him Ranch, cause he be dressin', am I right? As for the other kids in Bonanza City, we also had Greg, who was kinda the resident bully of the town. At least that's how he started, over the course of the season he grew into a respectable member of society. Not since Zuko has there been a more satisfying villain redemption arc. Between Greg and Taylor, Bonanza City had something of a rogues gallery going on. But the real big bad of the show wasn't any of the kids. Oh no, it was the show's host, Jonathan Karsh. Man, I wonder what this guy's doing today. Anyway, Jonathan was the person who narrated the show, as well as the one who ran the competitions that happened every episode. These competitions were usually designed to reflect the central conflicts of each episode, but as the season went on you can tell they just got lazy. One of the competitions is just root around in beans with these pigs to find tin cans, like wow guys, how long did it take you to come up with that one? The prizes for winning these challenges tied in with another horrible dystopian implication for Kid Nation, the class system. You see, depending on where each district placed in the competition, they would be put into different social classes for the following week. First place was the upper class, who would do the least amount of work for the most amount of money. Second place were the merchants, who ran the general store in the saloon in Bonanza City. Third place were the cooks, who... you know what, I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. And last place were the laborers, who did the worst and hardest jobs for the least amount of money. 
Do I need to explain why this was a bad idea? The idea of deciding which kids were given more money and responsibilities via a competition got a little bit of a Stanford prison experiment vibe from that. Not only that, but if all four districts finished the challenge within an hour, they were given the choice between two prizes that would benefit the whole town. The prizes always followed the same formula of one fun prize and one practical prize. And I'm not kidding when I say that every time they revealed one of the practical rewards, I said out loud, they weren't already giving them that? Here are just a few examples. More than one outhouse for the entire town. Toothbrushes and toothpaste. Fruits and vegetables. Like, there has to be laws against this, right? Are you telling me that if you can convince someone to sign a couple waivers with the promise of being on TV, you can get away with any crimes you want? I remember one episode when the kids were given the choice between a microwave and a pizza party. The kids all wanted the pizza, but Taylor had to put her foot down and chose the much better option of the microwave. And she was vilified for it. I imagine this is what parents feel like when their kids throw a temper tantrum in the dairy aisle because they didn't get any chalky milk. Hashtag justice for Taylor. That's my thing now, I demand justice for little girls on TV shows and cartoon ducks via hashtags. Okay, you remember when I said that it was all up to the kids to give structure to Bonanza City? Well, I sort of lied. Just a little. The adults couldn't directly influence the kids, obviously it would defeat the whole purpose of the show, but in order to kickstart each plot, they had the Pioneer's Journal. Basically, at the beginning of every episode, the town council could read a new passage of this journal that, in the Kid Nation lore, was left by the first settlers of Bonanza City. The advice in the journal would create the overarching conflict of each episode. These conflicts would range from, these kids are being bullies, you should lay down the law, or people are bored, put on a talent show, to kill your pets and eat them. Yeah, they gave these kids chickens that they were using for eggs. At the beginning of the episode, we see the kids playing with the chickens, hugging the chickens, cuddling with the chickens. It's very sweet. And then later in the episode, we see the kids bringing the axe down on the chickens as they scream for their little chicken lives. It's less sweet. I've worked with the butcher for about a year. <laughs> and I've butchered cattle, I've butchered pigs. I've butchered goats, I've butchered lambs. I butchered turkey. It's not alive! It's reflexes, okay? I butchered chicken. At least one kid must still be traumatized from this episode, let's be real here. Oh, and did I mention this was only the second episode? Yeah, you yank these kids away from their homes and families, and then when you've only been there a week, you force them to kill these animals that they've emotionally bonded with. I really want to know how this aired on CBS. In fact, I'd like to talk to any of the kids who are on Kid Nation and talk about their experience in Bonanza City. I'd specifically like to talk to Taylor or Greg just to see what how they feel about how they were portrayed, but I mean, any of the kids' stories would be fascinating. And I mean, I've got some clout to back myself up. Not to brag, but I did recently make a very successful video about ducks. One last staple of Kid Nation was the town meeting that capped off every episode. In these meetings, kids were given the opportunity to escape this living hell and go home with their parents, which surprisingly few kids did. But the real draw of these meetings was the gold star. Every episode, the town council chose one deserving kid to win this solid gold star, worth $20,000. 20, every time a kid won a star, they were able to call their parents and tell them the good news. My favorite was the time this little girl Mallory won the gold star on her birthday. I just love the implication that Jonathan Karsh wouldn't have let this little girl talk to her parents on her birthday unless she earned the right to do so. I think that the gold star should be purely about who's working the hardest, who's doing the most for Bonanza City. She got that gold star purely because it was her birthday. Oh Greg, always striving, never quite succeeding. Unsurprisingly, Kid Nation only lasted one season. If there's a lesson to be taken away from all this, it's that the FBI is offering a reward for information that could lead to the arrest of Jonathan Karsh, a gold star worth its weight in gold, $20,000.